Rudolph stays in the shotgun with Warren to his left on third down and one at the Pittsburgh 34. The Bengals bring the blitz. Touch pattern down the left sideline. And it's dragged. There goes George Pickens to the 10 to 5. Touchdown. He beat corner a woozy badly. And I'll tell you what, Mason Rudolph laid it in there perfectly. A fast start, no matter whether you're in high school, college, or pro, is it makes a difference. And, and especially when we're on our, you know, at this venue at home, gets the crowd into it. Um, to get a guy like George going early and his run after catchability is just, you know, second to none. So it was a, it was a pretty cool view as I tried to chase him down from behind. Mason Rudolph guiding the Steelers to a 34-11 win over the Bengals just before Christmas. Hi, everybody. I'm Missy Matthews, joined by Bob Pompiani, and welcome to the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. Pump, the Steelers now at 8-7, and seven, still have a shot at the playoffs. Two more games to go, but going back to December 23rd, just a crazy game and good to see for Mason Rudolph, who got his first start in over two years. And you would think there'd be a lot of rust, Missy, but he came right out, and you can tell he was in his element, especially down the field with some of these throws. Started with some stuff to Allen Robinson, and then as Cincinnati tried to take away the middle of the field, especially to neutralize Pat Fryermuth, who killed them the first time, He's going down the field more, and, and you can tell that he was very confident in that ability to throw the ball deep. Yeah, Coach Tomlin saying, you know, we talked about it before the game that Mason is confident, he's aggressive, he has a great deep ball, and those are all the things that you saw being able to score over 30. The way that they did it, getting the lead early and not letting Cincinnati get into it, I thought was really good to see just for the whole team, and that also meant it was complimentary football. The Steelers' defense dealing with a lot of patchwork, uh, they were able to contribute as well, but, you know, a night for the offense where things just really clicked was good to see, especially after that three-game losing streak. And it's nice to see Jalen Warren not get fined for one of his patented blocks as he did right <laughs> here. He paved the way for Calvin Austin. But uh, yeah, it's, it's if you're going to win games like this this late into the season, you need all parts of it working: special teams, defense, offense. And I thought, you know, you looked at this offense. Quick strike, the first one, two plays, 92 yards. Haven't seen much of that, especially for an immediate lead in a game. Uh, those quick starts are important, and I think this week and next week will be as important, if not more important, to really start early against these teams and not try to you know, fall from behind and have to dig your way out. Absolutely, and Coach Shonlin holding his press conference today. Of course, the big question, who will start a quarterback in Seattle? Here's what he had to say. Uh, Mason Rudolph was scheduled to be the quarterback for the week, and we'll see where Kenny is. We have the same mentality uh, as we start this week. Obviously, we have a great deal – more comfort because of what we've seen in stadium um, from Mason Rudolph, and that helps us. Um, but we still really are in the same posture. Um, he's got the ball to start the week, and uh, we'll see where Kenny is from a mobility perspective um, and, and then kind of go from there and plan day by day based on the things that we see from that perspective. And Palm Kenny was limited all three days last week in practice. He was inactive against the Bengals. So sounds like they're doing a similar thing, but I think what Rudolph was able to show them, it gives them mm. comfort that if that is what the plan has to be in Seattle, it will be a good one. Yeah, and he's very confident. I think Mason Rudolph knew that this was an opportunity he wasn't guaranteed of getting. So once you get it, it's what you do with it. And boy, did he turn it into something good for not only the team, but also himself. Uh, because he's been around here for a long time. And, you know, Missy, we talk about how much depth you need at the quarterback position. It's always been important, but, man, it seems like in 2023, you, you better have three or four guys you can count on. If not, you're going to have to go and find them someplace. And uh, I thought coming into the season, their quarterback room was a good deep room. Mm -hmm. And certainly having a guy like your third-string quarterback, Mason Rudolph, even though he did not perform like a third-stringer, is good to know that you could rely on him. Yeah, you go back to the 2019 season when Ben Roethlisberger goes down in the second game and what the Steelers had to do, Mason Rudolph, part of that. Um, and I think I agree with that as well. And just feeding George Pickens, I think Coach said today uh, they feeded him often and it was fluid. And we saw what he was able to do to this Bengals defense. Pat Fryermuth, of course, we know what he did week 12, and the Bengals were pretty much not going to let that happen this game. No, and they didn't. They took it away, but, uh, you know, that's when the one-on-one -on -one becomes available. And, you know, George Pickens, that first one, first of all, the, the safety took a bad angle, and all you have to do is give him a little bit of space. 
uh, and he will take it the distance because he can run that fast. Mason Rudolph with some good plays. That that scramble got a first down. Mm -hmm. He did. You know, a lot of quarterbacks would have slid sh shy of that first down marker. He was bound and determined to get it, and it opened up a whole bunch of different things for them. So. Uh, I, I really liked how he performed. He looked confident. He looked like, hey, my parents are here. This is my opportunity. I'm going to do the, what I can to make it the most, and he did. Certainly, and all the players, especially down uh, at, towards the end of the game on the sideline, were requesting that they play Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and uh, the Steelers <laughs> did do that over the scoreboard towards the end of the game. Uh, Plus, they were chanting his pretty. name. Absolutely, you know, several times. Yeah, so it's, it's an easy name to chant. Mason, Rudolph, and they were letting people <laughs> know that they liked what they saw. And so if he gets the opportunity again this week, uh, hopefully he can put up different situation when you're in that environment out there. It's not been easy for any team to go to Seattle. Very different than when you get a chance to play at home. Sure. Uh, but in terms of being able to help the defense, that's what Mason Rudolph and the offense did. Steelers defense having quite a night themselves, making life miserable for Jake Browning. Alex Highsmith, one of those guys, he had a sack and an interception. Let's hear about him from after the game. You know, proud of this team and the way, you know, that we, that we fought the day. Um, you know, getting those those turnovers was huge. And so, um, you know, just getting back to our culture, what, what, and that's doing, that's what that is, you know, taking, getting turnovers, taking the ball away. And, um, you know, just really shout out, shout out to Mason. You know, he, he had a heck of a game and just coming out and, you know, doing his thing. You know, he's he's been working and, and it showed. And so, um, you know, we, you know, we all rallied around him. And so, you know, he came out and he did his thing today. So, you know, just super proud of this whole team. And, you know, this is, this is, this is it feels good to get back on the, on the, on the win side, but, uh, this is only one game. I mean, you know, we got to you know close out these last two. You know, um, win these last two, and so you know we just got to build on this. And of course, the best defense, the one on the bench, the not not the one uh, defending a short field, and that's what they were able to do. But you know, just one person right there, Pompa, Pat P. He's playing safety. Eric Rowe stepping up. Miles Jack. Some uh, not uncommon names, but guys that we have not been dealing with all season stepping up big for the Steelers in that performance. Yeah, and you watch C.J. Watt always just never quitting on plays, making plays, Highsmith at the edge. You put pressure. This is what you force quarterbacks to do. And Jake Browning had a nice little run of three games in a row where he reacted well. But I think the pressure forced him into making throws he wasn't ready to make. And when you do that, this is what normally happens. Yeah, I, you mentioned T.J. Watt. He was held, tripped, and still <laughs> got the sack. Strangled. Uh, just <laughs> did not matter what was happening. He was getting to Jake Browning, which was good to see. But as we said, the complimentary football and being able to start to get things together towards the end when it really matters. And the thing about it, and you hit on this when we did the Mike Tomlin press conference, is that when you have a practice squad that is now designed not just for developmental players, that's how it was intended to be. But now, uh, you know, you have guys in there who are just there in case. And I think the NFL knows it is a, an attrition league. You need as many people as you can. So you have a lot of veterans who are just waiting for their opportunity. And when you get them, you know, they're good enough to step in and play. And sometimes you may not think that when you look at it just from, you know, globally looking down and say, well, they got all these reserves. But who are these reserves? Rowe has had a long history of playing in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Miles Jack, you know what he can do. So these are guys who just need the chance. And when they get it, you shouldn't be surprised that they played well. No doubt about it. You know, for Miles Jack, he said he did not anticipate playing as many snaps. But unfortunately, a Landon Roberts went down with that pec injury. And for the Steelers, Coach Tomlin ruling him out for Seattle. In terms of the safety position, Trenton Thompson and Minka Fitzpatrick should be limited to start this week. We won't know more about their their game status until we get closer to Sunday. But as you said, just for those guys to step up, we, we've seen it throughout. Um, and hopefully guys can stay healthy as you head to the last two games of the season. Yeah, very important games. they got to win them. Their defense needs to make plays. Uh, you could surrender yards, yes, but not points. And on the other side of it, you got to come away with not giving the uh, – the ball away and and if you do that you're you're just making it very difficult on this defense which as you said is put together with you know some patchwork qualities to it so make it as easy as possible and i also think the steelers would love to run the ball effectively against seattle because if they do that that takes a lot of pressure off their defense which if you're on the sidelines a lot, you get rested, and you're mm -hmm. better in the third and fourth quarters of games. Right, and you know, kudos to the offensive line and what they were able to do to mm -hmm. help Mason Rudolph uh, play the way that he did and also getting the run game going with Najee and Jalen. But as you mentioned, the next two ga games, extremely important to the Steelers. Not only do they have to win, but they also are going to need some help. So let's take a look at the playoff picture as we sit here today. The Steelers on the outside looking in, but 
not that far out. Uh, it is just one of those things. The Ravens and the Dolphins, we know they are already in. The Browns, though, they have a chance to be the one seed. And the Ravens and Dolphins play each other week 17. And a lot of these teams have been very good at spoilers. Uh, you know, the Patriots specifically, they really ended Denver chances of getting to the postseason by winning in Denver. Uh, and some of these other uh, teams, they could be dangerous. The Jets can be dangerous, even though the Browns should be favored to win that game. Uh, Jacksonville, the Colts, and the Texans, all 8-7. and seven. Somebody's going to win that division. Jacksonville had a huge lead at 8-3. and three. They've lost four in a row, Missy. So they need two of those three teams to lose. Specifically, it would be help the, the teams that they uh, lost to, the Colts and Texans. If the Steelers could win out and have those two teams lose, uh, you can jump up into the number seven spot minimum. Yeah, it'll be. Crazy to see. I'm sure this will look a lot different when we sit here next week heading into the final week of the regular season. But for the Steelers, uh, enjoyed the win over the Bengals. Now it's time to move on to Seattle, and it will be an interesting week and a big game, as you said. Thanks for joining me today. Always a pleasure, Missy. All right, that has been the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. We'll see everybody here next week.